it pissed off a lot of people. Went into a full rage. <laughs> because they're like, this doesn't look like a Nike shoe. I'm really good at being stubborn. His anger made him more sharp on what he wanted. I don't think he makes anything easy for anybody. It's so him because it genuinely came from him. Good for him that he stuck to his guns. I started writing for Nike in 2006 or seven or five. Yeah, around that. Stefan at the time was, he was on fire. Nobody was skating like Stefan's style. He was absolutely the switch master. He's tall and lanky, long flowing hair, and he has a penchant for wearing flowy clothes as well. And I mean this in the nicest way. It's kind of like a wet noodle. You know, he's a very charming kind of like character. He'll be doing really high level, difficult tricks and look like he's half asleep. And everybody was just like, we need to go after Stefan. He always had two, three video parts a year for like a five, six year period. He was such a hot commodity. We wanted to come up with the shoe very quickly, but yeah, it didn't work out that way. They said, hey, we're gonna do some more signature shoes and you're the next one. What was the initial plan? Oh, there was no plan. <laughs> we sort of whipped this shoe out of the bag and he sort of looked at it. I don't like bulging toes on shoes. I said, no, flat toe, flat toe, flat toe. Most athletes didn't have an aesthetic point of view. He had a different agenda. My shoe, my way. That's what I said. I don't care. I don't have a shoe now, and if you don't do it the way I want it, then I still won't have a shoe. It doesn't matter to me. Stefan Janowski's shoe has to be what Stefan Janowski says. Basically, he told us, this is not my shoe. I don't know how you came up with this. What were you thinking? We were both had different ideas. Picked it up and looked at it, and he threw it back at us. I don't, that doesn't sound like something I would do. What is this? That's not my shoe. We really have to start from ground zero again. It's just a lot of phone calls, drawing pictures. Stefan was, you know, a wild card. We went back and forth for a really long time. It took a while for them, I think, to realize, like, all right, this guy's not budging. What does he want again? His pet peeve was that skate shoes were too big, too puffy. As he skated, he couldn't feel the board. Stefan was very adamant about making a shoe that was paper thin. Skate shoes at the time were just massive, kind of like wearing a Kleenex box on your foot. Armored tank type shoes. Baked potatoes for your feet. Stubby toed, puffy suede potatoes. His first sort of statement was, I want a shoe built with the least amount of material. Closest to being a foot. We jump off big sets of stairs, big gaps, big grinding out big handrails. We're taking a lot of impact. So people were trying to find the indestructible shoe. But the only problem with the indestructible shoe is you want to have a real close connection with your board. You have these bulky, heavy shoes, just came with his own set of issues. <laughs> the closer my feet are to my skateboard, the more connected I feel to it. The shoe part is just to make your foot look good, but the foot is really what helps you skate. For him, it really was, I want to feel the board scraping across my foot. I want my ankles to be bloody. I want a shoe that's going to make my foot bleed. I want my foot to bleed. And we went straight to the factory, flew out to Asia, and just started building something. The trick with skateboarding is a very abusive sport on the shoe, so we needed to create a shoe that was both durable as well as minimally built. Some of the things I would say in, the, in my temper tantrums was like, you are Nike. You can do anything. <laughs> oh, he said that? Great. <laughs> he definitely had a temper tantrum about it. That's why I was so hard on them, because I knew that they could make the best shoe ever. They didn't think it looked like a Nike. It was a big problem. It was completely out of left field. At the time, they were trying to push technologies in all our studies and research and development. There was a lot of very expensive looking technical shoes. Multiple airbags, very complex foams, cabling system, fused to the outside of the shoe, futuristic looking mesh and rubber. And Stefan's shoe had none of that. But you mm. said you wanted it low as possible. We worked with the factory to get it so low that they said it was illegal to produce and we had to sign a bunch of Ooh, waivers. that's cool. But with that... Illegally low. <laughs> the team was very nervous about the shoe. Our bosses brought all of us into the office and the reaction was terrible. They hated it. They had other pro athlete shoes up there that looked 200 to 300 dollars and you know we we're coming out with a 75 dollar shoe using a hundred year old technology and look super basic one of my first tasks was organizing the launch party for the shoe and stefan had this 
list of demands. That Dancers with snakes. Yeah. Doves to be released upon his entrance. Absinthe on tap. Unbelievable. They assumed that it would tank. They bought so light that it became a rare commodity, not by strategy, but because of fear. We were under the gun, trying to get it done, but also making sure that Stefan was happy as well. That pressure produced greatness. And when did you know that you had something special? I think it was when Stefan didn't give our shoe back. <laughs> so we had to have the factory remake another sample while Stefan was skating it. First sample was like, yeah, perfect, you did it. Yeah, I don't think I gave him that. <laughs> it just started picking up and picking up, and by the second year, it became bigger than we thought, and then third, fourth year, we're like, what's going on, and started taking over the rest of our business. It became a massive hit. So for me personally, and the small team that worked on the shoot, we loved it. It was a shoe that we felt we wanted to wear. We knew the skateboarding community would gravitate towards it because it was so special. It was about the craft and the make of it. It was one of those shoes that as soon as you lay your eyes on it, you know it's a home run. I can't really emphasize enough how important it was for us to create our own unique shoe. Up until that point, our biggest successes were vintage shoes. For Nike, what it did was it shifted the paradigm of what an athletic shoe could look like. It was Stefan fighting for what he believed in. At Nike, they have a wall of the top 100 shoes, and Stefan's shoe sits on that wall. It is within the realm of Chuck Taylor. That's how many pairs of Stefans that we have sold over the last 10 years. It has transcended skateboarding. I haven't skated in another pair of shoes in 11 years. Party. party. It was insane. It was like full formal. It was like a goth parade. It was good. Yeah. It was fun. My parents having a good time. <laughs>